Okay, so just a reminder that these are the various database transformers that we've got. So we have SQL Executor and SQL Creator. We can do reading of features, which allows you actually to read features from a database midstream in a translation process. And the joiner does a similar thing. The joiner works with non-spatial data, but the feature reader will do the spatial. And it also allows you to do spatial interaction, like contains and intersects and things like that. Um, we were going to hope to get to a change detector, but even if we don't show these, you know, we'll still send you the workspaces so you can play with them. And then the geometry validator, which is new in 2013, is really essential tool for working with databases because you can um, take a look at the data and make sure it's valid in terms of self-intersections or whatever inconsistencies that the database will not accept, you can fix with your geometry validator or even run it against the data afterwards and see what, uh, what features have failed because some databases will let you write anything into them even if it's not particularly right. valid stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at, we'll just have a look at um, our second example. <laughs> yes, second example. Man, it takes a while to get going here. The SQL Creator, um, let's just see what that one was going to do. Okay, this is pretty simple. It was just going to uh, select some data from a database, so we don't actually need to run this. SQL Creator allows you to set up a SQL statement, and in our case, we were going to just select a particular one of those parks rather than reading in the whole lot of them. In fact, what you'd be more likely to do is use a very sophisticated join yes. transformer that was doing multiple inner and outer joins to, to pull together a bunch of tables and um, execute shoot, them here. Shoots the results sh out. Yeah. Shoots the results out. Uh, the next one, we're using the SQL executor. Which is like the creator, except it happens for each each row that goes by. That's right. And in this case, what it's doing is using um, some rather more interesting, there's a couple of options here. This one, the source data had been presented to us as a text file showing all the SQL statements to create a table. Oh, so yeah. it had a create table and a bunch of inserts and things like that. So what this one would do is, you know, you could, let's have a look at what it just looked like. I don't want, I don't want to view it that way. I need it's to do an open it containing other. folder. Yes. A nice trick, open containing folder. And we'll take a look at it. So what it is is a bunch of statements like this. Right. So, so people in the past haven't known how to deal with this. And one of, uh, one of the other fellows in the group came up with this neat idea of using the SQL executor to read that. Execute each SQL statement. And, and pass it through. Yes. So the SQL executor becomes a very simple um, method of reading in the text line data that's come from that source right. and making it all happen. Okay. So that was that one. Playing back SQL, basically. Yeah. And then below this, you have some that do spatial queries. These are... Yes. Now, this one was rather more interesting, and it would have been fun to do, but I think we've, we've pretty okay. much run out of time. But here, what we're going to do is, once those tables have been created, we could actually start to do some interesting buffering stuff using um, the SQL executor to actually perform the spatial relationship um, based on the geometry. Right. So for those of you that are SQL gurus, this is the way you can continue to do your SQL from within FME. Right. Via this and we just wanted to show you that in these things we have on the left-hand side a list of all the functions available to you. And so, Rob, so you can get an idea as what they are. And we even have a link to the help. So if you click on that help link, um, we, we've tried to make that easy. And that works across all the databases in FME. And that particular example is also available on our FMEpedia site. Oh, so conveniently how, enough. Yeah, how to use the native commands to do things within your SQL executor and SQL okay. creators. So again, you'll get these workspaces even though we haven't been had the time to actually show you them. So that's one way of doing it, that, that task. But a better way to do it if you aren't a SQL guru is how to do yes. it with our feature reader. And so this translation does the same thing. It was going to bring in some source data, buffer that source data, and then go out to find the features that fall within that buffer. Right. So here the feature reader transformer, again it's going out to hit our posters database and it's going to look for a table. The customers. Yes. Basically you're saying show me all the customers within some buffer of the stores. That's right and these happen to be coffee shops so then we were looking to see who lived near yes. the Tim Hortons or right. who lived near the uh, right. Delaney's. And this of course works with any database FME supports and we will use the database's native spatial index to do this very, oh here's where you get to say the relationship you're looking for. 
Yes, so here you can say I want everything that's contained by that buffer yeah. or crosses it or intersects yeah. depending on what my particular feature types were. So that's the kind of behavior that the feature reader offers you. Right, right. so again we're kind of saying there's the, the, if you want to do SQL, you can do SQL. If you don't want to do SQL, you don't have to. FME has the SQL transformers or other transformers like the joiner and feature reader that can uh, do these things without dipping into SQL statements. That's, that's right. So that's, uh, that's how all that okay. works. Okay. So then um, possibly just as a last, in our last two minutes, I'll just show you how to bring that post just into ArcMap yes. and then we'll leave it there. We won't go through the whole change detection part of we'll, the process. We'll, we'll just describe, but, but to go ahead. So yes. we're going to, so down, somehow you're bringing, you're bringing your posters in here? Yes, so I, this is ArcMap, those of you that aren't familiar with it, and I am allowed to make a database connection. So here I've added a database connection to, gives you the variety of platforms, so I'm using Postgres, yeah. and it points to the particular machine that I'm looking for, so my BP PostGIS 20, and then I'm using my user password, etc. And so then it will go and actually show me the list of databases that are available to me on that particular machine. Mm -hmm. And the one I wanted to look at, of course, was PostGIS. And so I built myself a connection. And on that connection, you can see that uh -huh. there's actually a whole ton of tables. So their table filtering is a little bit different to our table filtering. Yes. So in our case, we have these uh, ones here that were the ones we've been playing with so far. And so my city parks data, which I know is ready for post for ArcMap, can come in here and it calculates the extent based on the uh, the spatial index oh, that I've cool. created for it and brings my data right in here. And I can do all the things that I would be able to do in ArcMap, such as symbolizing things and working with my data here. Right. But the one thing I'm not able to do, and this is a this is standard with any of the database connections is that I'm not able to edit this data here. Right, that's right. an ArcGIS thing, nothing to do with us. No. So I guess the longer form of this demo, which I'll now talk through, is that you would have copied this into, you'd export it into a file geodatabase. That's right. Then we can edit it in here, and then you can go and use FME to do change detection between the file geodatabase and the original, and yes. post updates. That's right, so I could have brought in my, the same thing again here, Oops. bring in my geodatabase that's got this stuff in it and then I can make changes to it. So in fact yeah. if you take a look at this here I had it, had it set up with some changes made to some yes. of the polygons. Why don't we take a quick look at the workspace because I think the last thing just as we're kind of closing out is to show people that we can do updates to an existing database. That's right. And so that must be what one of these is about. That's right. So here once I had made my changes in ArcMap in that little geodatabase, now the cool thing in 2013 is that I can use a file geodatabase API. I don't even need an Esri license edition of FME. I can do it with the same professional editions yes. that I've got with PostGIS. So I can read my geodatabase using the file API, read my PostGIS, which is my original features, yeah. and do a change detection to compare the two and figure out what's different between them and then update my database. So the stuff that was unchanged, we don't care about. That's the That's yellow right. port. The added ones, you're going to go around the top here and insert them. You're telling it, please insert. Yes. Using this magical DB operation. And the bottom one is telling it to delete where the ID. So basically, you're going to apply the updates. That's right. And so when I apply these up updates, and we can take a look at them, and it There's one other trick I noticed. You're using a feature holder to do all the inserts at the end. Exactly, because when I ran this the first time, as you always do when you're practicing, it wouldn't do the insert until the deletes had happened. Yes. Because, of course, again, I've got a primary key. So things you have to worry about with databases that you don't right. have to worry about so, with other Again, in FME, the data follows, follows along these lines. When we hit a feature holder, that means everything else is going to be done before that one lets loose. So that in this case, all the deletes would be done. And That's that right. would make you happy. Yes.